Medfield. Thank you for watching Medfield TV. Tonight we are doing happenings at this at uh, Town Hall, and I think you probably all know this man sitting next to me, Mike Sullivan, who's going to give us the update on the social things that are going on at Town Hall, the environmental things, the economic things, and for the as it's obviously the end of December when we're doing this talk. Mike. Or does the New York Times say all the news is fit to print? Okay. Or print to talk about. Um, yeah, well, of course, we're approaching the holiday season, or I guess we're in the middle of it between Thanksgiving and Christmas, so uh, there is a lot going on. In fact, the, uh, on just the stroll last week uh, uh, for the Christmas lighting and the concerts, and they had about 10 venues in town. I understand it was a raging success. The sidewalks were crowded and all the venues were full. That's so great. Really a Good nice idea. time. Because the weather helped, I think it was. Oh, the weather was ideal. A lot warm than usual, but it really brought out the crowd. So mm -hmm. I hope it uh, is a precursor of things to come that'll become an annual event uh, and just as successful. So I think uh, congratulations to Hank Marcel for his usual lighting job and and uh, memo and all the other people that worked to make it a real success. And um, uh, I suppose. We should talk about the, the major the, the big news, news last yes, night. <laughs> at last night's selectmen's meeting. Richard DeSorger announced that he was not going to run for re-election. Uh, he was elected three years ago, uh, and his term is up at the end of March. And er everyone assumed that he was going to run for re-election, but he announced last night that he had accomplished most of what he set out to do three years ago, and he thought it was time for new blood to come in and, and uh, um, come up with some fresh ideas so he's not running for re-election. Yeah, I was totally surprised at that. I had no idea in this world I that he would do that. I think we all were. He just seemed to enjoy the job so much and to be so good at it that uh, uh, it's hard to believe that he's not running. But mm -hmm. uh, I, we appreciate all that he's been able to accomplish in the last three years and hope we get someone just as, as good to uh, run in his stead Somebody that really cares. Yes. That's yes. The, to me, that's the primary thing for being a selectman. You really have to care about the town. Right. Not he, just the town today, but the town in the future. And he not only cared, he put his time and heart and soul into it, too. I mean, he really uh, went out and went to meetings and checked on, uh, he walked all over town. He was walking five miles a day and coming back with this list of things for the rest <laughs> of us to do. So we were able to get a lot done. but. Uh, I think we're all very surprised. Yeah. So, so anybody that's interested in running for selectman, you have until I think it's around the middle of February to fill out your papers and and get them back to the town clerk. So think about it. I'm curious to see who will come out. I think we all are. Yes. Yeah. Of course, no one was going to run against Richard, uh, so I, it'll be a a surprise and people will have to make up their mind fairly quickly because everyone just assumed he was going to run. So. Yeah, I know when I, because he finished my term, after I finished my 30 years, Richard ran um, right. at, for when I announced that I was not going to run again. But several people had asked me to let them know if I was not going to run again. So I called those people and said, I'm not going to run again. Mm. <coughs> Richard was very glad to hear it. But I wonder if any of the other three, uh, the three others would be interested in running this time three years later. I'll yeah, I'm very curious. Know. I, uh, I asked him if that meant that uh, because uh, after his first three-year term, you were elected to his seat mm -hmm. and were there for th 30 years, and then when you announced you weren't going to run, he ran for your seat and served three years. So I asked him if that meant you were going to have to serve another 30 years. So That'd be very interesting seeing. I'll be 82 in a few weeks, <laughs> well, which would make me 102. You know, I, I understand the... Uh, <laughs> Council on Aging is having a birthday party tomorrow for a woman uh, who's uh, turning 105. Peggy Doerr. It's got to be yes. Peggy Doerr. Yes, it is. And uh, Bill was showing me pictures of her and, and uh, really uh, mm. is, is with it and, and sharp as a tack. Yes, so, she is. Uh, I've sat and talked to her. Yeah, it's amazing. We've had so many people in Medfield that live to... A good age. There was Mrs. Vassatoro yeah, was 106, yeah. and then there was uh, um, 
Mrs. Uh, Pedersini lived to be 103, mm -hmm. and I think there was another woman that lived to be 103. Probably other than ten. So, um, so there must be something in the water, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that expensive water that we're selling these days. So. I'm not sure I want to make 106, thank you. <laughs> not sure I do. Well, if you have your health and your wits about you, I think it might not be so bad. No. But, but anyhow, congratulations to her and happy birthday. Absolutely. Uh, uh, there are a lot of things going on right now. Uh, a lot of people are wondering about the um, work on the railroad crossings. Uh, the MBTA and Mass Coastal Railroad have done two. They did the Mount, uh, the uh, Hospital Road rail crossing and of course the 109 crossing. Mm -hmm. And they both came out really nice. They're really uh, a big improvement. Uh, and while they were doing the, the um, Hospital Road Crossing, uh, they worked in conjunction with our water and highway departments who had to put a water main uh, for a main to serve the new water tower oh, that's under right. the track. So they were able to get that in uh, while the uh, uh, rail crossing construction was underway. Perfect timing. Yeah, and the contractor then came in and, and connected it to the pipe that had already been in place. and. Now they've got to test it and, and uh, sterilize it mm -hmm. and be ready to go. Uh, the water tower, on the other hand, uh, is not going to be ready until probably May. Okay. Uh, they decided um, to uh, wait. It was originally supposed to be finished in the fall, uh, but of course everyone knows last winter was pretty harsh and slowed them down a bit, and then they uh, kind of uh, were a little bit slack this summer. They didn't have crews on site, so they fell behind. And um, water and sewer agreed that it was better to wait until spring to paint it because you're likely to get a better and more long-lasting paint job on the water tower okay. in the warmer weather. So um, that should go on board in the uh, spring. And then uh, we'll be putting bids out sometime in January for cell tower antennas uh, leasing sites on top of that water tower for cell towers. That'll be interesting. Towers. Yeah. Curious yeah. to see how many you get. As we make, uh, oh, about 115 to 120 thousand dollars a year leasing space on top of the Mount Nebo mm -hmm. water tower for cell tower antennas. So hopefully we'll be able to generate a substantial amount of money from leasing on that side as well. Sure. Um, and uh, uh, Green Street is done. Uh, we did the highway did a lot of paving this year, so they were able to uh, get Green Street done. Uh, they will be putting another coat on uh, next summer, uh, but they like to have the first coat settled before they put the second coat. And they are working to get the poles out of the gutters. So they have the new poles set behind the sidewalk lines and they uh, still need to uh, get the poles out, but they have to get the uh, Eversource, Comcast, and Verizon all have to take their wires okay. off the old poles and put them on the new poles before they take the poles down. Um, so um, they did uh, what? Uh, a whole bunch of streets. Uh, but the Green Street, to me, the Green Street sidewalk was a prime thing I always wanted. It really is. You know, it makes a huge difference. You don't realize before there wasn't much difference between the street, the curbing, and the Absolutely. sidewalk. Absolutely. I used to walk my dog there. So there. it was hard to tell when somebody was walking whether they were on the sidewalk or in the street. Yeah, the old sidewalk wasn't safe to me because of the angles and the interruptions and the sidewalk cover. Right. But on the other side, there was none at all. And there's so many kids that would walk to the swim pond. That's what I was concerned. Not, my own kids would not have walked on that side. Right. But I was very concerned about kids yeah. walking uh, on the street over there. Yeah. Yeah. Very concerned. So I'm and, so glad it's done. And now with the curbing and the, and the concrete sidewalk, it's very easy to delineate. Mm -hmm. and I've heard a couple of people say that they think the street is narrow. And well, it is narrow. <laughs> it could be. It may be psychological. You know, sometimes when you put a, a curbing up, uh, people uh, perceive it's narrower and when it actually could be the same way. Because before the sidewalk and the street kind of went together. Exactly, yes. It did, yeah. unfortunately. And, and it does uh, make it a little difficult, I notice, when you turn from uh, Green onto Brook, mm -hmm. the um, 
pole near the corner makes it difficult. You have to go further well, out in the intersection and yeah. get around the pole. So hopefully when they get the poles out of there, that will help a bit. Mm -hmm. um, so um, now what else is going on around town? Um, the uh, warrant, Selectman opened the warrant last night for the 2016 town meeting. It's amazing how quickly they <laughs> managed to run into each other. It seems like we're just finishing <laughs> up from the things that were voted at the right. 2015 town meeting and already we're looking at 2016. And there are several things that are probably gonna go on the warrant. The warrant closes the end of January. Uh, but the selectmen have been talking about putting an article on to uh, see if the town, uh, town meeting will vote to put the question of ex accepting the Community Preservation Act on the, ba on the again, ballot. Again, here we go again. <laughs> the following election. Yes, so, uh, and they've appointed a committee uh, with the acting chair of it, Dan Bible, to uh, study the um, uh, uh, results, you know, what would happen uh, and what might be accomplished, what the impact would be on the tax rate and mm -hmm. whatnot. So um, they'll uh, hopefully be reporting. Uh, school committee appointed a committee to study fields um, and a field, both for school fields and park and rec fields. Uh, believe it or not, that artificial turf field they put in is I think about 10 years old and that's about the life expectancy of those fields. So they're looking at replacing that. They're looking at the fields at Meta Comet. Uh, Are they thinking of making them turf? I don't know. I, I, I don't think they'd make those artificial turf. Okay. Um, they might do like, uh, uh, well, they've done all the Little League fields. The little, well, there's possible they could do the Little League field at Meta Comet, you know, like they did at the high school mm -hmm. field, make the infield yep, so do. turf, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. The committee is. It should be done sometime in January with their report, and then we'll find out. So I don't want to second guess them. But and Park and Rec would also like to redo the tennis courts at Meta Comet. They say that they're in pretty tough they shape are. and they need to be uh, rehabbed. And if you do it before they get too bad a shape, you'll uh, uh, save money. It's mm -hmm. cheaper to do it than having to having it deteriorate too much and then not being able to. Uh, fix it at all. Sure. So, um, and um, Park and Rec is also uh, talking about putting an article on to uh, hire a project manager and do some preliminary design work for a Park and Rec facility. Um, they would like to get going on that before the school department is talking about a new elementary school to replace are. the Dale Street. Although that looks like it's going to be, I don't know, somewhere five to seven years away, uh, which is good because in 21, 22, and 23, the bonds will be paid off for the three school renovations. Okay, okay. uh, so that will free up some money that's been uh, expended on debt. Where does the Park and Rec want to put this facility? I think they'd like to put it up by McCarthy Park up near the state hospital. There are some people that would like to see it stay down near uh, the center, you know, near There's the There's a big center. advantage to having it at the center. It is. You're close to the swim pond. Absolutely. Yeah. They feel there are big advantages to having it close to the fields up at McCarthy Park, too, so I don't know. Um, build, two, build two little ones. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't think we want to do that. <laughs> no, I was teasing. Yes. I I'm not even sure whether I'll vote for one. I'll have to convince <laughs> yeah. me. Yeah. Um, and then... Uh, Council on Aging is talking about uh, uh, appropriating funds, which they say that, that they've raised uh, from donations and contributions um, to uh, uh, do a preliminary design for an addition to the center at Medfield. Uh, they say they've outgrown it and they need more space, particularly for the respite care program. That's proved very popular. and They would like to expand that, uh, and, but they feel they need more space to do it. So, um, you know, every time you think you've done just about everything there is to do, um, a bunch of new projects crop up. Yeah. And so it's a never-ending cycle. I guess it's like, like your house. Every time you think you're done, 
there's another leak or a, a breakdown or something mm -hmm. that requires attention. So, um, and you know, uh, I think Ken Feeney's probably going to be retiring. That's what I assume. So, to Ken, yeah. uh, I hope he's just uh, doing like I do, talk, talking about it. But I think he's a little more serious this time. So. That will be a big loss. He's he has done a, a super job. Yes. He really has. Um, if you just look around the town and all the things that he's been responsible for, from closing the landfill to building the fields at McCarthy Park to the treatment plant, the water system, the uh, roads, uh, mm -hmm. the Newtown garage. Recycling, all that, all that comes under the them. the transfer station operation. So. Um, and that's another thing. We just uh, got th uh, three proposals for uh, the single stream recycling. There, we had a three-year contract with Harvey. Uh, believe it or not, I think it's been five or six years since we started the single stream recycling, and we're up to about a uh, thousand tons, a little over a thousand tons a year that we uh, bring to the single stream recycling uh, company up in Westboro. So it's about 27% now of our total uh, uh, that we either take to the incinerator or or, re, or take to single stream recycling. Uh, about 27% of it is, is single stream recycling. Up from about 23% when we started. I'm surprised it's not more. Well, I look at my trash, I have more recycling stuff than I do garbage. Yeah, uh, well, uh, you know, there are people that just are too lazy or too unwilling to recycle. You're right. And, and How do we uh, convince them? So I'm on that committee, as you know, and I, I know. we would love to love to find a way to convince people that this is the right thing to do. It's hard, you know. There's been some suggestion that you open the bags and inspect them and reject them if they don't. We talked do about that at our meeting this week. Yes, but I'm I'm not sure. Yeah. I trash the trash I, inspector. I think I think we'd have to have a referee down there. Or, <laughs> it's or not a job I would apply for. No. I think, think of di dirty diapers. You'd never know what was in there. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Um, but it, uh, you know, I do think people, for the most part, are are good about doing it, and uh, and of course we're not counting the leaves and the brush and the, the metal pile and the we do about a, and the clothing and the books and the swap area yeah. and, and the swap area really was a did a landmine business this year. Yes, they it was. really uh, um, were very successful. Those volunteers are terrific. They really are. They are. And I think it was nice that we were able to provide tents for them to get them out of the sun a little bit and get them a little shade and give them a semi home to work out of. But uh, they uh, really deserve a lot of credit for all the time and effort they put into doing mm -hmm, that. Do. I hope people appreciate what they do. And actually, several people did write letters to the editor and, um, and to the selectmen, uh, thanking them for their work. It's a part-time job with no pay. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Those are what you. Those are what you call real volunteers. Yes, they, they put are. their their time and effort where their mouth is. So. Um, so uh, you know, we will be continuing the, the uh, new prices, of course, the commodities market, you know, paper and glass and, and cardboard and metals have fallen way down in price. So the price that we have to pay per ton of the re for the recycled materials is doubled. It'll go up to $20 a ton this year from $10 a ton. The um, um, cost for the transportation because they come and pick up our, our recycled materials has gone up slightly, not much, from $155 a trip to uh, 160 the first year. And then, uh, I, no, it stays 155 the first year, 160 the second year, and 165 okay. the third year. Um, and we do about, I, we average about 15 loads a month. So um, it's a it's an increase, but it could have been a lot worse. The other bids that came in were quite a bit higher. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, luckily, the price for the trash, uh, we're part of a consortium of about twenty some towns that really is led by Walpole, and they were able to negotiate a lower price on the trash component, the stuff that goes to the Millbury incinerator. 
last year. So our price dropped down from $78 a ton to $64 a ton. Yeah. And that will go up next July, uh, adjusted by the cost of living. So, but that shouldn't be too much because the cost of living hasn't been going up that much. So, um, you know, that's uh, pretty well set for, um, for the next couple of years anyway. And uh, uh, we're hoping that all those people that we talked about that haven't been recycling will see the light and I start so. recycling. I wish there but, was some way we knew to spur them on. Yeah, but you're right. I, you know, I, I probably take three to, uh, twice as much in weight and volume uh, in the recycling mm -hmm. area than I do in the trash. I, you, by the time you recycle, you have very little trash left. Um, there was a suggestion that we put in pay-as-you-throw, and you know, that's been quite controversial. A uh, number of towns around the area have it. Uh, people don't like it, especially <laughs> initially when they put it in. And, uh, I'd like to avoid it if at all possible. And if people cooperate and continue to recycle, and we are able to improve our recycling rates without it, I think that's the best way to go. Yeah. But our committee's still keeping their minds open on it. Yes. I think you have to. Yes. Right yes. now, it doesn't seem like the way to go. Yeah. But well, speak, five years down the road, who knows? Speaking of the way to go, I always, I, I kid, I say, I think I've been here too long. When I came here in 1975, we had garbage collection. And then we did away with it. And I said, just put your garbage in with the, the trash. Food, yeah. Yeah. food waste, yeah. Food waste. And now uh, they're talking about uh, reinstituting it, only now they call it organic food waste <laughs> recycling, which sounds very fancy. <laughs> sort of like calling the dump the transfer station. Um, but um, they, uh, Megan Smith, who's chairman of the uh, uh, transfer station recycling committee, um, and the rest of the committee members uh, have been uh, investigating the costs and the convenience of it so yeah, Rachel Brown has worked hard on that she did quite a survey of it and uh, uh, and they've, they've done some other things too I know Barbara Mayer Mayers has mm -hmm. put uh, a lot of time in she's and we've they instituted a twice a year styrofoam collection and, and that's so a good they, thing too yeah they're gonna have one I think right in early January, the uh, first Saturday or something. That's January. a perfect time after Christmas, after yes, the holidays. Yeah, yeah, and then they do one in the spring. So, um, so there's a tremendous amount of work being done by those volunteers, both from the uh, swap area and the recycling committee. So, I was kidding them. They wanted to change the name from the solid waste committee, so they came up with uh, recycling and transfer station committee uh, so I said are you sure you want to call it that because the acronym for that is rats <laughs> um, so they decided to reverse it call it transfer, transfer station I, I know that. recycling so <laughs> you have to think about those things I still call it the dump <laughs> I've been I, here too long I do too yeah yeah and after 52 years it's the dump um, so what else is going on let's see um, the uh, uh, well, we're lucky we haven't had much snow this year, and the weather's been great for yeah. getting things done. Uh, but we said that last year, and every I remember saying, "Boy, uh, you know, it looks like we're not going to have any winter this year." And then <laughs> it was around January 26th, I think, we got hit with that blizzard. Mm -hmm. Incidentally, we uh, have got our reimbursement from FEMA which is the Federal Emergency Management Agency. That's the new term for the, what we used to call civil defense. We got about ninety-three, ninety-four thousand dollars from bad. them for the first blizzard. Yeah, so that helped. We had about a $330,000 snow deficit yeah. that we were able to cover uh, all in one year. Some communities have had to spread it out over two or three That's years to pay it It was a bad year though. Yes. It really yeah. was a bad year. It, it was, yeah. But you get those every once in a while. Hopefully, we'll have 10 years of, of good <laughs> weather now, but who knows. Um, the bad weather seems to be out west this year or down it south. It certainly does. So, so. It certainly does. Um, and um, let's see, what else is going on? Um, the, uh, uh, oh, 
the uh, we're, we're struggling to deal with the Affordable Health Care Act reporting requirements now that we have to start reporting information on all our full-time employees oh, uh, starting for 2015 which ends in a couple of weeks so we have to f file forms with our employees by the end of January and then file an electronic report with the Internal Revenue Service by the end of March. And who does all this work? Well, it's a combination of the treasurer, the collector, oh, human resources, you know, so it's Georgia, Calivas, Joy Rusciuto, Chris Trierweiler, and then uh, Peter Moran from the Insurance Advisory Committee has he's been good. a big help because he understands a lot about the reporting requirements and very helpful in mm -hmm. steering us uh, in the right direction. Uh, we also work with our in health insurance carrier and our payroll provider. We use uh, ADP for payroll and we have Blue Cross Blue Shield uh, through the Mass Municipal Association. So, um, but it's, it's a lot of work and there's some severe penalties if you don't get it right. Um, and of course the penalties go to the IRS. Uh, so uh, I suppose that's how they're gonna help pay for the cost of the program, but it certainly could add, potentially could add some huge cost to the town. Mm -hmm. so, um, and I know it's not very exciting, but the town meeting last year voted to set up a uh, OPEB trust fund I keep wanting to call it OPEC trust fund. <laughs> I get oil mixed up with health insurance, retiree health insurance. But uh, it's basically a, a trust fund to start funding or unfunded liability for retiree health insurance, which they tell us is about $46, $47 million. Jeepers. Um, I think that will come down once we've set up the trust fund because there's a lot of interest rate assumptions that go into that that mm -hmm. could lower the cost. A lot of communities aren't doing anything about it and there's going to be some problems in uh, next year. I think everyone's required to put it on their balance sheet. So I read one article that said 70% of American cities and towns will have a negative net worth once they put those God. unfunded That's pension and health insurance liabilities on the book. Well, we'll all be in the same boat as the federal government, I guess. Mm -hmm. If they're so far in the hole, they can't even count that high. Um, so, um, there's a lot of other things going on. The library, we have a new library director who's doing a terrific job. Good. Um, and uh, of course, the uh, 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 Friends of the Library, uh, they had a reception. Uh, the director of the Friends of the Library, uh, the president of it, is stepping down after 14 years. They had a little reception for She did a good job. Year. She did. Uh, I knew they did a good job, but I didn't realize they raised $20,000 a year mm -hmm. for uh, added programs that the taxpayers don't have to fund. Right. Uh, museum passes and um, electronic scanners for, for the checkout desk, and guest speakers. Uh, uh, so it, it's a great service another group of volunteers provide to mm -hmm. the town. So we are so lucky. Um, and uh, of course our new governor has filed legislation a couple of weeks ago to uh, help out the cities and towns. I think he's I think he's doing a terrific job. I do too. I'm very impressed. He's um, he was a selectman. I think it was either Marblehead or Swampscott, one of those towns up on the North Shore where he lives. And the uh, lieutenant governor was also a selectman out somewhere out around the Worcester area, I think, uh, Karen Polito. So uh, they understand the problems the cities and towns are facing. They're trying to address them. So right. we have to try to get our legislators on board because I'm sure a lot of the lobbyists will be in there trying to keep these special interest features going uh, because uh, what costs the town's money frequently makes money for these other groups so they don't want to <laughs> see it go away so um, so we'll have to see we're, we're trying to get our legislators to come into a selectman's meeting in January to that's, that's a good idea they should come in regularly anyways we've always said yes 
yeah. it's a good idea. Let people yeah. know who they are and what they can talk to on that. Yeah, yeah. I think it's great. And we're lucky our legislators seem to work well with each other. Mm -hmm. and so it's, uh, um, but there are a couple other things. We had a meeting last week with uh, Charlie Aspinwall, who's the town administrator over in uh, Millis, um, and Ken Feeney and Bobby Kennedy, myself, and um, our engineer from HNTB. We got a bridge inspection report on the uh, oh. Dover Road, Bridge Street Bridge. Or okay. Most people think it's the West Street Bridge of Medfield, but uh, there's a beam that's having some uh, rust problems and has to be replaced, so we're trying to figure out how to best get that yeah. done. The cost on that looks like it could be somewhere in the $2 million range, oh. so we're trying to see if this state funding available because really that road is a commuter road. I was, I was going to say, how many cars use it? I think it's about eight to 10,000 a day. That many? Oh, you go down there in the morning and the afternoon. Okay, I'm surprised. A lot of people um, don't want to go through Medfield Center mm -hmm. or if they're going through Dover, uh, they will cut off and mill us at, uh, and go take Dover Road and, go out that and way, cross yeah. that bridge. Okay. So. So it's a lot more traffic, but it really is, I don't think it's that heavily used by Medfield residents. Yeah, so I'd be surprised. It seems to me that if it's used by residents of several towns, it ought to be, there ought to be some state assistance in paying for that. Um, so that's what we're gonna try to look at. Okay, makes sense. Uh, in the meantime, there may be some less extensive temporary repairs we can make. It's not danger of collapse or anything because it's only one beam. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it does need attention because it is, it can only get worse and the longer you wait, the more expensive it'll get to repair it. Yeah. Um, so, um, and, and the railroad ties, if you see uh, a cruise working on the railroad, uh, the uh, MBTA, the Mass Coastal Railroad are replacing all the ties on that line that cuts across down uh, 109 down by Noon Hill Grill, the one that, that where they replaced the grade crossing on 109, but they're replacing all the ties starting in Framingham and going down to Mansfield. Uh, something like 40,000 railroad ties they're gonna replace. Is there a reason for this? Well, that's, that's what, what I'm trying to figure out, yeah. I think, you know, they, they say you won't get more trains, but they want to speed up the trains. Right now the trains can only go 10 miles an hour. If they get the great crossings and the rail bed and the rails replaced, they feel they can up the speed to maybe 25 to 30 miles an hour. Um, I think, you know, there was a rail yard in Boston that closed down near where the old Coca-Cola plant was mm. in Brighton. Um, or Alston, I, I never get those two mixed up, you know, <laughs> straight and which is which. But anyway, right along the Charles River there between the Harvard Business School and BU, um, there was a rail yard that closed down and uh, about a year ago and they, they just say now that the freight um, from Cape Cod, the New Bedford area, the Fall River area has to come up this way oh. uh, on that line. So. I'm worried that there might be some more freight trains that will be coming along there. And even right through right Medfield Center, right down 109. Yeah, we get four trains a day and that already messes things up enough. Uh, I hope we don't get a lot more. Well, Walpole and Foxborough are more concerned with the commuter rail aspects of it. I know Mr. Kraft has been um, involved somehow in, in this program. <laughs> We were all shocked when the T, which always claims to be broke, managed to come up with $23 million to buy that rail line from CSX Railroad. Very interesting. And now they're spending all this money rehabbing yeah. it. So I guess they're not as broke as they claim they are. Um, but in any event, he would like to run commuter rail out to his uh, uh, football stadium and shopping mall or whatever they call the rest of it, uh, Gillette Stadium. and. Uh, Patriot Place, um, and he bought a lot of land out in that area when he, in antip anticipation of having a casino sited there, and of course that fell through, so I suppose now he's looking for things to do with it, and it would, uh, 
increase the value of that land enormously if there were commuter rail accessible yeah, how, to downtown Boston. How loud a voice do the towns that the uh, tracks go through? How loud of that? For, how loud a voice? Excuse me. Do they have? They had no voice. None, none at all. Uh, they could scream the, and yell, the, but it, nobody would hear them. By the time we found out about the deal, um, it was already down in Washington. It was rushed through in the last few days of the Patrick administration. And uh, Foxborough and um, uh, Walpole are upset about it, I think. I would think that so. They, uh, I was told that some guy researched it. it. The study was presented by a law firm in Worcester. But I was told that somebody researched it um, to find out who paid for the study. And they dug and they dug and they had difficulty finding out who it was. And they said that yeah, they found out it was paid for by the Myra Kraft Foundation. Okay. So, so I assume Mr. Kraft has had something to do with it. And it certainly it, sounds uh, like it. It was whipped down to Washington and approved in Washington wow. uh, before the towns, well, almost before the towns found out about it. Wow. By the time we found out about it, they said it's too late. There's nothing can do. It's already gone to Washington. So I assume Mr. Patrick uh, 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 wanted to push it through in the last wow. days of his administration. That could make a big difference in a town like ours. It could. With several yeah. streets there. Yeah. Right, right across. Of course, the big trend now is uh, public transit. Uh, public transit. Public I'm all for yeah. public transportation. Yep. Yes. We had the train service when I moved here. Yes, yes. And if it if it uh, goes someplace, you know, I'm, I'm not sure Framingham to Mansfield is going to be an enormously popular route. <laughs> so, uh, I, and I think at RNC, the trains out of Boston would come out to Walpole on the Franklin branch, and then they would be diverted to another rail. This rail line, but that would be in Walpole, and then they'd go south from there. Mm -hmm. So that shouldn't affect us. There was some talk, I guess, about on game days, bringing a couple of trains from Worcester, wow. and then it would go through Framingham and then get on this line, yeah, yeah. go through Framingham and Sherburn and Medfield and down to the stadium. So, uh, but that would be a couple of trains. I sure. don't envision any long-term uh, unless there's something going on that I don't know about, uh, I wouldn't envision any long-term heavy commuter yeah. usage of that line. Uh, you know, it, it, uh, somebody said, well, could you go to Boston? I said, well, you, you know, you have to either, on that line, would have to go either to Walpole and then get on the Franklin branch of Walpole, or go, go north and go up to Framingham mm -hmm. and then get in on that branch. And it's usually not a very good way to go. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going out to get back in, so I don't envision that. Uh, although, who knows? Wow. So That's interesting. Uh, yeah, yeah, a lot going on. Um, uh, oh, the other thing that's going on is that renovation of the uh, old, uh, well, depending on how long you've been here, it's either the Wills Hardware site uh, building or the... Uh, um, Allen Insurance Company. Allen Insurance Company <laughs> or the uh, Master's Touch. That, that too, yeah. Uh, but that's starting to shape up. It's starting to look very good. They're, they've put the siding on, they've got the roof on, they've got the windows in. and um, it, I, the, uh, I think the latest expectation is sometime around April or May, the restaurant that's going in on the first floor will be opening. Okay, I'm curious to try it. I am too. It's, I understand they're gonna do a lot of grilling uh, they're going to have a wood burning uh, grill and a wood burning oven. Mm -hmm. So, and Sounds the chef, good. the uh, owner has been a chef at some really uh, highly regarded restaurants in Boston and Cambridge. I think in Boston it was Grill 23, and in Cambridge it was the Harvest. So, you're free to give his name out or not? Uh, the what? Are you free to give his name? Oh, uh, I don't know his first name. His last name, I believe, is Foley. That's why I'm, I'm curious to know which Foley. I know it was Foley. Yeah, yeah. He lives in town. Mm -hmm. uh, several so, do. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, I, and he seems like a very nice man. I hope it so works. I, I hope it does. It's, it, it will be a nice thing. I think they're going to call it Avenue. And I said, where did they come up with that name? And they said, well, it's on Jane's Avenue. <laughs> I said, well, Jane's Avenue isn't really an avenue. An avenue is supposed to be tree line. And, you know, so, but. No, I love it, love it when somebody that lives in Medfield is actually starting a business in Medfield. 
Yes. I've thumbs up. I give everybody a uh, hip hip hooray. I hope yes. they do well. Yeah. Well, I went to a thing a couple of months ago. There's a company that's located in uh, uh, Old Medfield Square uh, that uh, uh, does uh, uh, information technology work, you know, software, hardware, repairs, and whatnot. And there's two brothers, one lives in Medfield, and one lives in uh, Midway. And they're up to, I think, 10 or 11 employees. They hope to uh, get up to about 30. Uh, and their wow. business is really expanding. And um, I was kidding them. I said, you know, it's nice to have a company with corporate headquarters in Medfield and a branch <laughs> office in Boston. So <laughs> I like that too. <laughs> very unusual. So. so I hope they stay here and, and I grow hope they here. Do too. So. Um, so I don't know, do you have any questions about or observations? The public safety building is, is coming along great. Yeah. There in some parts are a month ahead of schedule. Mm -hmm. And I know everybody's calling it the Taj Mahal. I, I know, I keep hearing the Taj Mahal. And yep. they're saying it's too big. And I, I uh, remind people that a couple of years ago they were calling the town garage project the Taj Mahal <laughs> and saying that was too big. And then we had last year's snowstorm. and. We were able to weather it. That's a bad pun, I guess, mm. but we weathered it pretty well. And uh, uh, because we had the the lift and the pit and the hydraulic uh, equipment and everything, we were able to repair a lot of the uh, damaged trucks and plow blades and whatnot in house. Where other communities, uh, there were lines to get. There were so many wow. broken pieces of equipment, they couldn't get them repaired, had to put them out of service. Yeah. Are they but still planning to open the police and fire station October of 16? That's the due date. That's what uh, I last I heard, no, to, no change know. then. Well, it depends. If, if the weather stays like this, I suspect they'll be a month or two ahead of be schedule. Nice. Yes, yeah. Because they're really making good progress. They've, uh, they're, uh, they are gonna, I was talking to the chief yesterday and he said they're gonna put plastic wrap around the exterior, the, uh, uh, not where the fire engines go, but the uh, office wing, mm -hmm. I guess you'd call it, so that they can work all winter long in, inside and they'll have, you know, heaters, those salamanders or whatever type, propane heaters, whatever they have. Um, and they'll be able to work right through. Um, if it stays like this, they might be able to get some of the exterior masonry up uh, mm. before they uh, have to shroud it in, so to speak. So. Well, it'd be nice to have it finished. I voted for yes. it with a great deal, as in, a great deal of enthusiasm, as you probably know. Yes, yes. I, I really was a little embarrassed well, sometimes going in there and seeing how bad yes. it was. Well, that's the old ambulance attendant in your EMT experiences. Uh, but just going in for anything. And yes. If you had to go into one of the rooms, I thought, oh my God, it, this it is was an embarrassment. for a town like ours. Yeah. It was and of course, uh, it was so bad and so small, it makes what we're doing now look uh, so big. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think once it's done, you know, um, I remember with the town garage, everyone said, oh, it's so big, what do you need one that big for? But then when you put all the equipment in, it's there just it about holds it. And I think they'll see the same thing with the public safety building. And as you put masonry on the outside, and landscape around it, I think you'll, it seems to get smaller. I think it will, a lot of it's psychological. You look and you see all the steel going up and it looks bigger than, than it will be. It is big, I mean, it's about yes, it is. over 40,000 square feet. So it's actually bigger than the town garage. Especially compared with the, what was there before. Yes, I, I don't yes. remember the square footage before, but I it wasn't much. I think it was somewhere around 11,000 I'm surprised feet. it was even that much. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, but I, I think people are going to be very happy with it. There's a couple of meeting rooms in there that are going to be available for public use. Mm -hmm. and, uh, there's actually space in there for the main computer um, equipment for the town side, which will be good because it's, you know, staffed 24 hours a day. Absolutely. And, and it will be in a secure location. And with all these days of hacking and you know, I don't know, I just got my credit card hacked the other day. They told someone had tried to, and I suppose I'll embarrass myself with this one, but somebody tried to hack in and sign up for a membership in a club called farmersonly.com. 
and I was telling someone at town hall, and they said, that sounds familiar, and they looked it up on the internet, and it turns out it's a dating site for farmers, cowboys, and cowgirls. <laughs> So my credit card had to be cut up, and here it is the week before Christmas, and I have no credit card. I got one. You can use mine. I only charge it 10%. Oh, you're, you're worse than the credit card company. No, they charge about 20%, I think so. Um, but uh, it's, it's, this is the third time I've had my credit card. I've never had up. it. I was caught. I bought something at Home Depot, and they had that... Uh, um, attack or whatever they call it, oh, yeah. cyber attack, I guess they call it. And so I had to get my card changed then. That's and scary then stuff, though. Another time, so, and I guess it's happening more and more. So, But um, that's progress, I guess they call it. So. <laughs> I guess it is. Um, but the public safety building, I think, is, is going to be a really nice nice project. And, and I'm th hoping when the uh, water tower gets done, uh, that will cut down our electricity cost and help pressure, yeah. water pressure. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, um, uh, what do they call it? The solar array at the wastewater treatment mm -hmm. plant. They have all the panels up now. Oh, do they? Yeah, and the, the electricians are supposed to start this week. It's two to three weeks work. Okay. So, um, and then they have to come out and hook it into the building and hook, hook it into uh, Eversource, whatever. So it, they expect by uh, around the beginning of February it should be online. That's great. And that's supposed to save um, about 37% of the, uh, generate about 37% of the electricity used at the plant. That's great. So, that really is great. Yeah, so uh, that's, I think, a really good investment. So we are looking now at, at uh, doing something similar on the roof of the Newtown Garage okay. and also on the roof of the Public Safety Building. So we'd have uh, just makes sense three now, solar sites. Okay. Yes, it does. Yeah, um, and uh, when people ask, well, this, what happens on cloudy days? Well, that thirty-seven percent is averaged out, assuming a certain number of cloudy days, sure. a certain number of sunny days. So uh, it's it's uh, it takes that into account. So um, I was surprised the solar panels are bigger than I thought they'd be. They're fairly substantial and uh, you can see it if you take a ride down either you know the wastewater treatment you plant is fenced in but you can see it but or if it's also the same area where the uh, shelter 2000 okay uh, what do they call it? they they don't call it shelter 2000 anymore i guess <laughs> i don't know what they call uh, it <laughs> medfield animal shelter i think or so um so w we're hoping that uh, uh, we're doing a lot of other things. We've changed the lights at the town hall, and uh, they're going to be changing the lights at the library to LED, the exterior lights, and that should save quite a bit of mm -hmm. energy. We changed a lot of the interior lights at town hall to LED lights. That's great. Um, so you're trying. Trying, yeah, yeah. Every little bit helps. Yes, it so, does. So. Well, Mike, thanks a lot for the roundup for calendar 2015, but only we're only halfway through fiscal 2016. I know, but it seems like yesterday we were at Y2K, <laughs> the new millennial. But that does so. take care of halfway through this fiscal year anyway, and, yes. and certainly takes us to the end of this calendar year. Yes, yeah. So thank you very much, and I wish good wishes for holidays for everybody out there, and thank you for watching Medfield TV, and stay tuned. There'll be more editions coming. Seating was a production of Medfield TV.